Hi lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery. Today we're celebrating Mabin or the Autumn Equinox together. I want to give you some ideas on how to celebrate Mabin, what to do for the Autumn Equinox, Mabin rituals, Mabin spells. We'll talk about the four pillars of the Autumn Equinox and how to celebrate them in a modern context, some more about the pagan roots and traditions of Mabin. What have I planned for our Mabin celebration? We're going to soak in the last of the summer sun and celebrate the beginning of autumn, bake some warming autumnal kitchen witch goodies for the people that are not big fans of apples or pumpkins in this season. Go to the market to get some freshly harvested produce for a fantastic big Mabin feast. Make our soul alive and a witch's cottage ready for fall. And last but not least, I would like to share with you how you can turn a Mabin feast or Thanksgiving dinner into a witchy ritual. Now let's enjoy this magical morning where the sun kisses the mist. Whee! On the Wheel of Year, Mabin is celebrated as the second harvest festival. And depending on where you are from, you will have a similar celebration, at least in the rural areas. If you are American or Canadian, you might know it as Thanksgiving. Mabin is also sometimes titled the Witch's Thanksgiving. For me in Germany, it's Erntedank, which usually takes place in October, as well as Michaelitag on the 29th of September, or some sort of village festivities where everyone comes together, drinks together, <laughs> celebrates together. And you Usually the fields and the harvest will be blessed. Nature is now abundant with different autumnal veggies like squash and pumpkin and... The squash and pumpkin, that's all I can think of. <laughs> such a country girl. It's prime time for the grape harvest and with the autumn equinox the hunting season starts again, making the stag another symbol of Mabin. Personally, when celebrating the autumn equinox, I can find four key correspondences to it that I feel capture the spirit of Mabin, overlap with old traditions and pagan roots and also can be very easily converted into modern day life, even if you're not a farm girl harvesting your pumpkins. But rather indulge in that pumpkin spice latte. No shame, no shame. Me too! The autumn equinox is the cusp. Summer ends, fall begins, that balance between darkness and light. We can reflect on the darkness and light in our own lives, meaning a autumn equinox or Mabin ritual could involve sitting down and evaluating what has been going good in your life in the past year, what has been going bad. It is a time to let go of things, to put them to rest, because now we're entering in a more restful, more quiet, more calm time. So we don't want to do with all that bullshit. We want to, you know, be cozy, be comfy, in peace with things. The different Germanic tribes that hold those councils, they were called Tings, and they were very structured to the moon phases, and usually the biggest Ting, the biggest gathering, was held in September. Possibly because it was much harder to meet over the winter month, and at those Tings, very important discussions, issues, conflicts were discussed and solved. That was also an activity that cleansed the that made sure there was no lingering conflict and that also kind of restored that balance. You could also reflect on balance in your own life, meaning work-life balance, maybe reflecting on your relationships, how much do you give, how much do you take, balancing out your responsibilities, keeping indulgence and health somewhat in a line. My Mabin morning activity will be to walk over the misty fields and really go into myself. One exercise that I find extremely helpful when speaking about re-establishing a balance in yourself is to ground, letting those negative energies flow into the earth that will neutralize it as you will. And then I feel I can walk away much calmer and happier and lighter in a metaphorical sense, because unfortunately it doesn't burn that many calories. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain
much better. And now it's sunny, it is still chilly outside. So I am now ready to go home, have a huge cup of milky coffee and eat something autumnal and warming. The very second the first leaf dares to turn color, my baking obsession goes in overdrive. I just love to create this homey, warm atmosphere where the house smells delicious like freshly baked cake. And obviously apple is most associated with Mammon, but this year our apples are not that sweet. The summer was way too short and started way too late. So I'm resorting to plums. This recipe just tastes like fall on a plate, magical plum swirls to conserve the happy summer energies. We'll start with the dough and we mix flour and active dry yeast. Don't be afraid of lady yeast. Once you know that she's a bit extra and you know how to treat her, you will never go back to store-bought stuff. Butter her up with some sugar and then treat her to a Cleopatra style milk bath. Nice and warm, not too hot. A little salt makes life more flavorful. And last but not least, we add enough melted but cooled down butter to warm our hips over the winter month. Au contraire to adult time, you always want to fork the dough before you finger it. Yeast likes it straight to the point. It's also less messy that way. Hide the aftermath under a dish towel and let it sit in a warm spot for an hour so it can think about what it just did. Naughty. Homemade jam is one of my favorite gifts to receive and it's actually much easier to do than most people think. You see the full recipe down below. Here I'm doing a slightly different, easier version for immediate consumption. I use damsons because I like the tangy taste. Plus, it is the tree that I have in the garden, but you can do this with any plum variety. Plums are associated with love, relaxation and passion. Making this a great kitchen witch recipe to battle the rainy day slump with passionate cuddles. Or you can use it as a quick fall breakfast with a big coffee to inspire passion for work or hobbies. Throw them in a pot and then add a mixture of warming autumnal spices. The spices we use in here are destined to get you lucky because all of them are strongly associated with luck and good fortune and lust, love and passion. Saranis, cardamom, cloves and of course a little bit of cinnamon which by the way is a proven aphrodisiac. Now we let it cook and bubble and stew on the stove until it reduces to this jam-like consistency. Personally, I don't mind if there are still bigger chunks in it. It smells so cozy and delicious, like candlelight on a rainy day. In order to avoid sticky situations, pour some flour over your working surface or use a Teflon sheet and then flatten out the dough. If you don't have a rolling pin, use a wine bottle. But by the way, a swig of red wine mixed in with the plums would also make an awesome addition to this jam. We want to achieve more or less the rectangular shape, but you know, no one is perfect. Then we spread the jam and personally I like to add some roasted chopped nuts for that extra bit of texture. Carefully roll it up. Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. All that matters is that it will taste fantastic. If you are a lazy witch, pop it in the oven just like that to make a plum strudel. But for little rolls you need to cut bits of about two thumbs thick and flip them on a baking tray. 20 to 30 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius should do the trick. And there you have them magic autumnal plum rolls. If you still want to see an apple recipe, in last year's vlog I did a boozy spiced apple cider and a Bavarian Apfelstrudel. Traditionally on Michaeli Tag was also the time when the first artificial lights were brought into the house. Candles and oil lamps. Back in the times these kind of things were obviously very very expensive so they were not wasted on the summer month. So on the night of Michaeli it's a custom to light the first candles in the house and to also eat the Lichtergans, which is basically just a feast with a big roasted goose, very similar to Thanksgiving dinner. And for us cottage witches in modern times that obviously means we can finally get our candles and lanterns spread it all over the house like an evil disease. So the coziness shall commence. <laughs> In olden times, the summer solstice or Michaelitag also marked the beginning of the winter activities in the rural year, the beginning of weaving season. That, by the way, ends with Imbolc or Maria Lichtmes, with the weather getting colder and nothing growing on the fields. The people turned towards the tasks they could do in the home, and obviously, if you're spending a lot of time at home, 
you kind of want to prepare for that. So that's another key component for me, the preparation. For my kitchen witches out there, that just might mean canning, pickling, harvesting those apples, making applesauce, making jam, conserving the harvest. But if you're not big into those household activities, there are of course many other ways to prepare. One fun activity is to do a little autumn late summer walk and collect the last wildflowers you can find arrange them to a little bouquet that you can then dry and it will bring in those cheery energies and that happiness during the colder month or if you're growing your own herbs and you haven't harvested them all yet you can make them into smoke cleansing bundles or bouquets you could also collect your pictures that you made over the summer from your holidays arrange them in a scrapbook and a picture book to look at when those droopy rainy gray november days roll around maybe there are some things on your summer bucket list that you just didn't get around to doing. Do them now while there's still time and preserve those happy memories for yourself. Or maybe for you preparing for the darker times just means taking a trip to Home Depot and stocking up on all those lovely fall scented candles. Whatever it might be just make it your own. What I find important before inviting in those cozy energies is to actually make space for them. To clean and cleanse, declutter your space so it is more welcoming. This year I was surprisingly good at keeping the clutter at bay. There's only one thing I really need to face. Behold, the place that most accurately represents the state of my apartment when there are no cameras pointed at it. My closet! <gasps> Could you see that? Yes, you can! Now, as you can see, there is a ton of clutter in here. So many clothes that don't fit anymore. And a bunch of clothes that I was wearing last year in the pandemic slump, as I like to call it. So my mission for today is to find a bunch of outfits that I want to give away. So this is more of a happy space again. In the spirit of preparation for the darker half of the year. That I love Mabon so much is probably that it's a kitchen which is feast. Today I'm visiting Amberg Farmers Market which is twice a week so you can really shop everything you need fresh from the local farms, handmade jams, handmade pasta, cures, teas, spices. The autumn equinox is all about keeping that balance and I thought about my own life. How do I keep balance in giving and taking? Now obviously we take a lot from nature just by for example driving a car, flying a plane, buying plastic crab, engaging in fast fashion and I'm guilty of all of those too but sometimes it's good to then try to equal it out a bit by making sustainable good choices and that's also one of the reasons that I like to buy from local farmers because the local products don't have to be shipped from country to country they don't have that long way all over the sea where it already pollutes the air they also are usually not treated with pesticides as much and you support your local communities so that is something that I want to give back today Kann man essen, wenn man sie gewaschen hat. Ja, also das macht das. Das
Now that we have all those goodies, we're going to transform a Mabin dinner into a ritual. A ritual in a sense means giving meaning to certain actions and fostering a mindful environment and enjoyment. And you can even do this as a broom closeted witch when preparing a harvest feast for friends or family as it doesn't involve human sacrificing or naked dancing or all the other festive things we witches typically do. I start off by making an herb infused water for cleansing and having a fresh inviting scent in the air. My go-to's are sage and mint for the purifying properties. But you could also think of making a simmer pot with corresponding herbs or apple slices to have going before dinner for a more low-key alternative. I then draw a sigil for family bliss and communication on our sacred space, the dinner table. Now we can decorate our pagan harvest table with seasonal flowers. Over on Patreon this weekend in my Mavin Altar video I show you how you can hide a spell in a flower bouquet. Of course candles can't be missing for a cozy festive atmosphere. I chose a dark and light one to symbolize the balance that the autumn equinox represents. To honor nature, I set out different colored candle holders to represent elements that help grow the food we need on a daily basis. You could do the same with little bits of decor found in nature that represent each element. When setting the table, you can speak a blessing for this gathering. Maybe you want to invite communication, love, understanding or the fostering of friendship. And of course, some more seasonal decor just makes a colorful table even brighter. Before starting dinner, you can cast a circle by having everyone wash their hands in the herb water while thinking of one thing they want to let go of before indulging and focusing on enjoyment. This would also work great with passing the salt once around the table. When pouring the drinks, use this as a chance to speak well wishes for the coming year to your guests. As a starter, I'm preparing a grounding soup using root vegetable or those veggies associated with the ground. Carrots, potatoes, ginger, pumpkin. During first course, you can give your guests a prompt to mindfully enjoy the flavors. The main course represents the bounty of nature. My go-to is an easy bread cornucopia filled with fresh roasted veggies. Now I would love to eat game, but since I'm the only one in the family that likes it, we chose salmon, just because it feels fancy. Dessert is a berry crumble, inviting those happy, grateful feels. After dinner, prepare sliced apples and ask your guests to think of things they are grateful for. For each thing they think of, they can now add a sunflower seed to the apple. Leave these out as an offering to Mother Nature and her little creatures. I hope you enjoyed this Mavin vlog and got some inspiration for your own autumn equinox celebration. Have a magical Mavin!